Hey guys, what's up? Aparsh here with another McLaren 600 LT video. Today we're going to compare the 600 LT to what I call the budget category, which is the Nissan GTR and Chevrolet Corvette ZR1. Stay tuned. Alright, so... I kind of took a little bit of a hiatus from the McLaren 600 LT videos uh, just because work's been really busy. But um, I also <laughs> spent, man, I don't know, 30 minutes, probably the last 30, 30 minutes recording all of the stuff that I'm doing right now, only to find out that my cat had walked across my desk and hit my microphone mute button. And so when I went to start to edit my video, there was nothing, there's no sound. So this is take two of doing everything over again from scratch, and hopefully I do it faster and, as some people would say, more better. Um, okay, so we're talking about the 600 LT, which we've talked about a lot already. If you've not seen any of my other videos uh, and you're interested in the 600 LT in general, I've got videos talking about, uh, sorry, comparing it to the Porsche GT3 RS, GT2 RS, uh, Lamborghini Huracan, um, both versions, and the Ferrari 488 and 488 Pista. Um, so this is kind of more, oh, sorry, and other McLarens like the 570S and the 720S. Uh, this is the first video I'm doing, and it's going to be probably the last video comparing to other cars, by the way. Um, and this is the budget crowd video, I call it. So the GTRs and the ZR1. So um, yeah, let's jump in here. This is a, we're going to look at numbers here, just pure numbers on paper. How do the things all match up here? Uh, so we've got four uh, columns and we have the McLaren 600 LT on the left then one over is the GTR Nismo and then one, one more more over is the GTR Pure and then the ZR1 um, so we have prices and horsepower and all that stuff in here we're going to go line by line but quickly the 600 LT retails for $240,000 without options the GTR Nismo retails for $175,000 without options the GTR Pure Retails for ninety nine, basically one hundred thousand dollars without options. The ZR one retails for one hundred and twenty thousand without options. I I changed it to one twenty four because of how I optioned it out. Um, all right, so no addendums on these cars. The McLaren six hundred LT is available at MSRP. You don't have to pay extra like that you do with Porsches. Uh, and to the best of my knowledge, the GTRs are not selling very well these days. So you should be able to pick them up for MSRP if not less. I do not know about the ZR1. I'm not going to go call the Chevrolet dealership to find out if they're doing addendums on them. So let's just assume that they sell for about MSRP. Um, okay, so McLaren 600LT has 592 horsepower. The Nismo GTR has 600 horsepower, which is 35 more than the GTR Pure. And the ZR1 crushes everything else at an astounding 755 horsepower. That is a lot more. So we're talking, you know, 150 horsepower more than the next most horsepower i think i said that weird but whatever you know what i mean uh torque you're gonna notice that the first three cars just like just like here the horsepower is very similar for the mclarens and the gtrs the torque is very similar for the mclarens and the gtrs but again the zr1 just absolutely demolishes everything by a lot um 150 more torque you know 150 or more torque uh, foot pounds of torque um so yeah a lot more power in general um the weight is all definitely by far in favor of the 600 LT. It weighs about 3,000 pounds, whereas the Nismo and the Pure weigh closer to 4,000 pounds, and the ZR1 is about 3,600. Um, the Nismo is always going to weigh more than most other sports cars because it has all-wheel drive, um, and also it has a back seat. The 600 LT and the ZR1 are two seaters; they do not have a back seat. Um, and then I've got my little horsepower to uh, weight ratio, so. Um, you know, for every pound of um, of the car, or sorry, for for one horsepower. What? Else? <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> um, okay, so it's like for the McLaren 600 LT, it's a fifth of a horsepower per pound. Does that, that make sense? Um, and it that this is a pretty good ratio. The GTR is a, a worse ratio because of the all-wheel drive added weight in the back seat, and then the zero one has a better than a better ratio than the. 600 LT with just slightly more 0.21 horsepower per pound. Um, now horsepower power per dollar, the um, the ZR1 is really really good. Um, it's 164 dollars per horsepower. 
Um, so that's low. It's not a lot of dollars per horsepower uh, compared to the other vehicles. The GTR Pure is also also really good at 176, whereas the, you know the, on the other end of the spectrum, the 600 LT is at four. It's 400 dollars per horsepower you get on the 600 LT. This this again or not again, but uh, this ratio, this stat that I've thrown in here. Take it with a grain of salt. It's not supposed to mean that the one the the car with the best ratio is the best car. It's just a stat. You know these the the McLaren 600 LT is the baseline that we're com comparing against, and it's a track focused car. It's for the track. That doesn't mean you have to have the most horsepower to be the best track performer. You just need to get around the track the best, the fastest, right? So weight is a big deal too. Um, but it's just it's a fun stat for sports cars, and that's why I throw it in. And for kicks for um, for comparison's sake, if you look at the other cars we talked about, like the Ferraris, Lambos, Porsches, and stuff, um, you see that most of them are like three hundred plus dollars per horsepower. So, you know, the Ferrari starting at three seventy five, the Huracan starting at three fifty, um, the Huracan Performante is at five hundred dollars per um, horsepower. The McLaren five seventy S is three thirty five, um, and the Porsches are really high too. The lowest Porsche three sixty seven. So these are really high. This is this is a whole nother the the uh, GTR Pure and the ZR1 are a whole nother bracket of pricing compared to those other cars. And um, I think you could almost say that they're more of like they're supercars, but not exotic supercars. That's how I would say it. Whereas the McLaren 600 LT is definitely an exotic supercar. Um, I think the GTR Nismo is priced in the exotic supercar segment. And I think a lot of um, enthusiasts of the exotic supercars would probably immediately factor it out for the pure fact that it's a Nissan. Whereas other people like me kind of don't think that the brand is the, really the thing that matters so much as the performance. But it's kind of in a weird in-between gray area, if I had to say. And, I, and this price is really high for what it is. Um, so but we'll talk about that later. Um, the motors, this is interesting. Uh, the ZR1 is the only supercharged car I've reviewed here, and it's also by far the biggest motor, being being that it has a 6.2. The next uh, biggest motor that I had talked about in these comparisons was uh, the Huracans having a 5.2 liter V10. Um, so this is a supercharged, which is unique. This is supercharged V8, which is unique, and it's big. It's a very big V8, which is unique. Um, the GTR is that the only? You know what? I'm gonna Oh wait, I think there were some other six-cylinder cars. I think the Porsches are six-cylinder. I can't remember. Um, yeah, they're inline six on the uh, the the Porsches. So the Porsches have six cylinders and everything else. Ferrari um, and McLarens all had V8 twin turbos, and everything else had turbos. So twin turbos, I should say. Um, man, uh, transmissions. Um, the McLaren 600 LT has a seven-speed dual clutch, which is shared with a lot of their other cars. Um, the Nismo and the Pure, the GTRs have the same six-speed dual-clutch transmission, which has been around forever. I think they've upgraded it and maybe made some tweaks, but I mean, the GTR, the, the R35 GTR was launched in 2007, model year for Japan, and it's the same, basically the same transmission that is from that. So it's, it's 11 years old. Um, so they need to do some. I think they could probably do some updating, but it is a really damn good transmission. So maybe they don't need to. Um, but they could probably just give it another, maybe another gear or something just to sound like it's more modern. Um, the ZR1 has an eight speed dual clutch as an available option, but it is standard with a seven speed manual transmission. And that makes this the only supercar on the supercar list that I'm comparing against the 600 LT that is available with a manual transmission. The Porsche GT3 non RS is available with a manual transmission as well but its performance numbers are nowhere close to the other cars on these lists. So um, I wouldn't even compare it against the zero one. They're actually a similar price. Um, the GT3 is probably gonna end up costing you more money and it's a lot slower. Um, but anyway, we'll move on here. Drivetrain, the GTRs are all wheel drive and the other two cars are rear wheel drive. Um, and the zero to 60 times across the board are all really similar around the 2.7 to 2.9 range. Um, now here's something where that gets pretty interesting. Uh, the <clears throat> excuse me, the GTR Nismo does the zero to one hundred according to what I find online, one point three seconds faster than the Pure, and that is a mind-boggling statistic to me. Um, 
how is it doing it that much faster? Uh, the quarter mile time is a whole second faster as well. Um, there's only a little bit more power and a little bit less weight for the Nismo. So my guess is that it's something that people don't talk about very often, and it's probably the power delivery itself. So a lot of people talk about maximum power. So you're saying, how much, how much horsepower does your car have? Oh, my, my car's got 600 horsepower. Well, where does it have 600 ho- horsepower and for how long? Um, a lot of cars, you know, they're, the graph of the power is, uh, I think they call it linear, where it, it starts low and, you know, goes, goes up high to a maximum. So, like, you know, the top of the red line is where the max power is type of thing, or toward the, the end of the red line, at least. Um, so there are some cars where the power gets really high really fast, and then it plateaus and stays really high throughout the power band. Um, I had a 2007 BMW 335i, which was an inline six twin turbo. And that was a good example of a car that has a very plateaued power. I think the the top, the peak power was like around 3000 RPM or something like that. And it maintained it for a very long period of time. So even though it was only a 300 horsepower car, it performed a lot better than what you'd expect for a 300 horsepower car. Um, and this might be the case with the Nismo. It might be maintaining high levels of power throughout the power band a lot more aggressively than the pure version. Um, and that's probably just the way that they tune the boost. Maybe it's maintaining a higher level of boost throughout the power band a lot more. I'm just guessing, though. Maybe some of you guys can correct me in the comments, but how are they getting so so much faster numbers? Um, I, I guess a better suspension is another thing. Maybe it's delivering the power to the ground a little bit better. But it's pretty mind-boggling that it's doing uh, the 0 to 100 and the quarter mile that much faster. Um, 0 to 60 is pretty similar, though. And and just to go back to 0 to 60, so the, the 0 to 1 is reporting a 2.7 second quarter mile. Sorry, 0 to 60. The 600LT is speculated at 2.8. And then the 100, 0 to 100s, the, um, the 0 to 1 is actually a little bit behind the other most of the other cars here other than the Pure at 6.1 seconds, whereas, you know, the 600 LT is at supposedly 5.8 and the Nismo is at 5.7. Um, and the quarter mile times on all these cars are at around the tens, um, with the, the best timing here being the Nismo doing a 10.1. All these cars have a similar top speed. Um, you know, there's a little, the, the ZR1 has the highest at 212, but, uh, you know, they vary from 195 on the pure to the 212 on the ZR1, but they're all in the same general, you know, it's like, you know, 195 miles per hour to 210 miles per hour. It's not a big gap there. Um, and most of these cars are the newer model years. Uh, with the, the Nismo has been around for a while, but the new facelift came out in 2017. Um, so anyway, uh, we talked about a bunch of boring, maybe not boring, but just figures and paper stuff. And let's look at some colorful, fun stuff, some pictures. Uh, so um, let's do some building. Here's the GTR. This is the uh, Nissan USA website. Uh, funny fact for anyone that doesn't know this, if you just try to go to uh, Nissan.com, this has been going on for a very long time. Uh, Nissan is like some, there's another company called Nissan and they've owned the Nissan.com website forever. It looks like 94 is when they bought it. And uh, Nissan's been like trying to sue them forever and all sorts of problems because Nissan wants the, the brand, the, the car brand Nissan wants this website. Um, so Nissan has NissanUSA.com. And uh, they want to be Nissan, but whatever. That's kind of funny. It's a little fun fact for you guys. But um, so we're going to build out a Pure and a Nismo. There's two other versions. There's a Premium and a Track Edition. We'll talk about all four right now. So the Pure is the base model. It starts at $100,000. It has uh, the 20 inch raised wheels. If you don't know what rays are, you can Google it, but they make some of the best wheels in the world, in my opinion. Um, and they may have they have a variety of brands under their belt, basically, right? But um, you get the Brimbo brakes. Um, you get the same. You get the 565 horsepower V6 uh, in uh, sorry V6 twin turbo. You get the all-wheel drive system. It's a really good car. It has a bunch of good options right from the factory with the the basic version. If you step up to the premium, you're adding a titanium. Sorry, you're adding ten thousand dollars for a titanium exhaust system, a Bose sound system, and some active noise canceling stuff. I think that's not a very good deal in my opinion. Um, I have the premium. They didn't have a pure back in the day when the 2014 model year that I own, but I think you can get a, a really good aftermarket exhaust system and a better sound system for a probably cheaper. But if you wanted both of those things, maybe it's a good deal and you don't have to worry about shopping and having your car in the shop. Um, track edition steps up a whole lot more. 
So you get a Nismo tuned suspension. You get a dry carbon fiber rear rear spoiler. Um, you get different forged uh, raised wheels that are lighter weight, and you get a cool like black red um, contrast coloring in your interior. But you're paying about thirty thousand dollars more than the pure to get those things. So uh, I don't know if I think that's all that great. Um, you get all the things from the premium too, just to be just to be uh, clear here. So you know we're getting when you move from trim to trim, you get everything from the last trim, including the additional thing. So um, seems like a lot of money. And then you move up to the Nismo and you get more power. You get a different carbon fiber rear spoiler. Um, you get a, like a really aggressive body kit basically, right? But, oh, and you get Recaro seats, but it's $75,000 more than the Pure. And you can get a tune on your car for you know, fifteen hundred dollars or whatever. So, man, I don't know. <laughs> it sounds like a lot of money. Let's build out a pure. Um, okay, so on the pure, there's a bunch of there's more colors available for the pure than the Nismo actually. Uh, there's orange, there's red, black, silver, gunmetal, white, and blue. Um, I currently have a super silver on my car, and I think it's an amazing color. It's one of the best colors I've ever seen in person. I've talked to a professional painter that paints only high-end mostly all exotic cars ferraris lamborghinis um because i wouldn't want to get a quote to repaint my front bumper and uh he said it's the worst color from a painter's perspective it is the worst color to deal with because it's a five stage paint most not not layers so there's there's layers of paint that you have to do and then there's stages and there's an extra stage in the super silver that requires a sanding and if you mess up the sanding supposedly you won't know that you messed it up until you're completely done with the whole thing and you'll see that you messed it up and you have to start over again and buy all the materials and do all the work again so it is a there's a reason why it looks so amazing you can't see it in the you can't see how amazing it is on this picture on the internet you have to be in person you can't see any of it on the internet you need to see it in person to understand why super silver is so awesome it could charge way more than three thousand dollars for it um anyway i would not i probably wouldn't select it if i was building a pure maybe i would but i probably would go with blue um, because I really like blue. And this blue, I've seen this blue in person. It doesn't look anything like this blue on the internet. Like, it, I don't it, it, This blue almost looks purpley, and it doesn't look like that in person. So I'm not sure why they, their website looks like this. But I would probably go with the blue, because I, if I was buying this car, I'd probably be a little bit price conscious, and $3,000 is more than $1,000. Um, but I would pro I'd probably be between the blue and the silver. Um, all, a lot of these colors look great, though, no matter what. Um, you don't get any options for the interior. This is the interior and this is what you get. It's a pretty nice interior, sport seats. Um, they have a lot of carbon fiber, but there are no, there are no options that you can change. This is it. So um, next packages. There's only one package available and it's an all weather package. It's for people that are living in, you know, probably East Coast, uh, North, Northwest where you're getting snow and bad weather all the time. And you maybe you want tires that are a little bit uh, more all season and it has a coolant um, that is gonna be better for colder weather. Um, that's this is a good car for people that want to drive it year long daily daily drive a really fast car even in the snow and things like that you can it's all-wheel drive so that's kind of a cool option and it doesn't cost anything which makes sense because I think these tires probably cost less money um, and then that's it there's a bunch of knick-knacky things you can throw in tool kits and uh, lug nuts and floor mats and a fat person seat belt extender um, but that's pretty much it so the the nine Nine, uh, sorry, ninety-nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine dollar price tag, of basically a hundred thousand dollars, is pretty much what you're gonna pay unless you want a different color car. Um, so that's a pretty, that's kind of cool, and, and for some people maybe they want more options, but I think it's kind of nice that they do it that way. So we're gonna build a Nismo now. Um, the Nismo is only available in four four colors, and I would definitely go with pearl white because I think that the contrast between the white and the body kit with the red uh, stripe, I think it looks the best. That's just my opinion. Um, you do not get any choices for interior again, same as the other car. Uh, but there's a lot of, you can, you can see there's a lot of like red, um, contrast colors inside. Now here's something interesting. This is being claimed as a Recaro seat and you can see the Recaro logo there. And, but you tell me, does this seat look any different than the seats that other than the color and the stitching and stuff and the Nismo there, but does it look any different than the pure seat? So let's go back. Okay, so we're, we're back to this. Look, is that the same seat? Look at that. See that? Look at this little circle thing here. Look at that. 
This is the same. This is a Recaro seat too. They just don't call it a Recaro seat. This is the same damn seat. Go back over here again. Look at that. Look at that. There's that little circle thing. This is the same seat. You tell me if you think I'm wrong. Look at that. That's the same seat. Anyway. <laughs> it's got a brand name on it this time, right? So it's cost more money. Um, so it's it's pretty much, there's no packages. Same thing as the, like interior. There's no, there's nothing, no options. You can't add more carbon fiber. You can't do anything. Packages, there's no, there's not even all weather package. There's just not, there's nothing. Um, so what you see on the price is what you get. The $175,000 is the price is the price is the price. But, and then you pay the paint color if you want a different paint color, right? Um, so um, it's a, I think it's a very overpriced car. It does it perform well? Yeah, it performs really well, especially in these thing, these two zero to one hundred in the quarter mile where they're destroying the pure and even beating a, a two hundred forty thousand dollar six hundred LT. But you can do that with a tune on a pure. So yeah, you avoid your warranty and stuff, but I think it's not worth the the Nismo package doesn't seem worth it to me. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people will argue that you get all the suspension stuff and it's going to be faster on the track, blah, blah, blah. But that, that's just, I wouldn't spend that much more money on it. Um, okay, so let's build a ZR1. Um, so I've already got one kind of pre-built and coupe selected. You can get this in convertible, um, but I do all my comparisons in coupe only. Um, so they have two pack, two trim levels. They have the 1ZR and the 3ZR. The 3ZR adds a better sound system, which is just one more speaker. <laughs> so the 1ZR gets a 9 speaker bow system and the 3ZR gets a 10 speaker bow system. Um, you get leather wrapped interior stuff. You get a lumbar wing adjustment. Uh, you get heated and ventilated seats. I think it throws in navigation. Um, let's see. Uh, let's memory package. You get universal home remote, front curb view cameras, um, navigation, Napa leather seating services. So it's $10,000 more for a bunch of stuff. I don't think there's any one thing that's like a huge deal. A lot of cars, they charge you $3,000 more just for Napa seats. So maybe that's $3,000 there. And yeah, for some people, like you're going to get all these things anyway. So maybe you're just going to buy the package. I didn't select it. Um, there's a bunch of different colors. And uh, I applaud you, Chevrolet. If anyone from Chevrolet is watching us, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is really cool that you guys are basically giving you giving all these colors for free. And, and that's how it should be. These, these paint colors are black, um, white, red, silver matrix gray blue metallic gray metallic there's no additional charge for selecting these colors and almost every other manufacturer is not doing that right now and it really bugs me um we went and my wife and i went and test drove a model x the other day tesla model x they charge like i think it's like five grand for some of their metallic paints and i asked the guy like why do you guys charge so much for these paint jobs and he goes oh we got we got to add a couple there's two it's a four layer paint whereas the other one is a two layer paint how much how much does the paint cost i mean you've got robots painting your cars i mean wh where where are you how can you charge five thousand dollars for two extra layers of paint i mean it doesn't make any damn sense at all how much did the paint cost the material the actual paint material it must have been you know a couple hundred bucks or something they're buying in very large quantities there's no way they should be charging five thousand dollars for changing the color of your car it's absolute Highway robbery, and I hate it that they're doing that. So thank you, Chevrolet, for giving all these colors for free, even metallics. Um, there's three colors that they charge an additional thousand dollars, which a thousand dollars is a very fair price to charge for a, a better paint color or a more complicated paint color. So they've got a special red metallic, a special yellow, and a special orange where they charge you an extra thousand dollars. That's I think that's extremely fair for a thousand dollars for any car, whether we're talking about a Corolla or a hundred and twenty thousand dollars ZR1. Getting a special color that costs a little bit more in materials for a thousand dollars is very fair, but I, I like the shadow gray metallic. Um, so let's move on. I'll stop ranting. Uh, there's a ZTK track performance package, gives you better tires and better suspension. Um, because I don't, I personally am not a track guy. I should be, but I don't have time for it because I have little kids in the business and stuff like that. I wouldn't buy this just for me because I don't think I'd use that stuff enough. Um, and these tires are not going to be good in the rain, even though I live in San Diego and it never rains here, but I like the, I like the option of driving in the rain. Um, so I'm going to move on. I liked getting the wheels basically blacked out here. It's $500 to get the wheels blacked out. I think it looks great. Um, I went with the seven speed manual transmission. They charge $1,700 more for the dual clutch. 
I opted for the $700 air intake. I think that's a good deal. And I'm sure whether it gives you more power, I'm sure it sounds way better. And that's the big thing that I was going for. I messed around with the different <clears throat> colors of the, on the brake calipers. And I, I was assuming I would want red, but I actually thought it looked terrible. So I think the blue looked the best. And I kept it and it was free. There's like center caps and lug nuts. And then there's a carbon fiber painted outside mirrors. And I selected this. And I think that on this picture, I think it looks not quite like it will look in real life. Um, and I'll explain that. Um, these wheels, if you scroll up here, it says that the, that the wheels are carbon flash painted. So carbon flash is a color to them. Carbon flash painted aluminum. And you go down here, carbon flash painted outside mirrors. It should be the same color as the wheels. Um, and I think unfortunately this is just a 3d virtual rendering and it looks very dark black, like a deep, deep black. And it doesn't match the other darker colors like the wheels and the vents here. But I think in real life that this, since it's a carbon, which is typically more of a dark gray, that it will come out a lot better than it does in this picture. I, I hope it does at least. This is funny. This is a, uh, a car cover they sell for $1,200 and it's a C7R um, car cover. So it makes sure when you park your car in your garage, it makes it look like a C7R. It's just kind of a goof thing, goofy thing. Um, there's a Corvette museum delivery option where you can pick up your car at the museum and get a tour and all this stuff. That's kind of cool. And then interior, I think this, I think they're pictures of the interior. You get two options to pick of like what you're going to view. And I think they look really, really nice, like how they did this. Um, very realistic looking. So um, there's the regular infotainment system. And then there's the navigation. They charge you a little bit more for the navigation. Um, let's see. It, yeah, it charges you $1,800 more. I probably would get that. I don't know. I, I have navigation in a bunch of my cars. And I end up using my cell phone instead. So I don't, maybe I wouldn't get it. Um, yeah, I probably wouldn't now that I think about it. But anyway, uh, the GT bucket seats are what it comes with at standard. And I have the competition sports seats selected. I think they look amazing. Here's the GT buckets. I'll put it back on so you can see for comparison's sake. These look, I mean, these are good looking seats too, but they kind of look like old man seats to me, if that makes any sense. Like like my uh, C5Z06 had seats that look kind of like this. Um, and I think that these competition seats look awesome. The carbon fiber like harness pastors and stuff and the Alcantara um, center looks really cool. Um, I don't know why some of this stuff got, Oh, okay. So if you get the navigation system, you, they make you take this like a uh, performance data and video recorder. So I took that off and I didn't, I think I told you I don't need navigation anyway. So it'll keep the price up here more accurate for you guys. Uh, I did select the red seatbelt color. I think it looks, it looks awesome. <laughs> it looks absolutely awesome that's what i was trying to say um so i selected the red seat belts uh suede microfiber wrapped steering wheel you have to get this if you get the competition sport seats and then there's some other knickknacky stuff that i didn't select and a bunch more knickknacky stuff um so yeah you can get dive deep into all this little knickknack stuff but none of it's important bottom line is it comes out to be like one hundred twenty six thousand dollars with my options but $2,100 of that is gas guzzler stuff and destination. So I put, um, I put 124 on this. And so I've, we've built the cars. We've talked about the numbers and quick summary of these comparisons here. The zero one is an absolute monster of a car for the money. The GTR pure is a really good deal. Also, these cars are a whole lot cheaper than the McLaren 600 LT, which if, so if you were able to afford the 600 LT, you obviously could afford the ZR1 or the GTR Pure, and that could leave you a lot more money to sit in your bank to accumulate, to invest in things, um, to save for another car in the future that maybe you want instead, you know, all sorts of stuff like that. So some people are like, why would you compare those cars? They're not even close. Well, a, a real person in real life might be wanting to not maybe they don't want to spend the two hundred forty thousand dollars even though they have it that's a lot of people that have a lot of money don't spend it all that's how they got their money um i'm not saying that's me i just i know i know people like that um i know a lot of people that have a lot of money that don't don't even buy any cars that are a hundred thousand dollars they buy you know twenty thousand dollar cars so anyway um i think the pure is a good value as i said the zr ones are a really good value i think the 600 lt for what it is is a decent value and it's an amazing car and the price is what it is you can't you can't argue that um when you compare it to the other supercar exotics i think that it's priced decently um 
It's just that the, and I, I think the GTR Pure and the ZR1 are just not really exotics as much. They're supercars, but they're not exotics. And that's fine. That doesn't mean that everyone wants a supercar exotic or exotic supercar, however you want to say it. So um, I think they're all good options. I think the GTR Nismo is not a good deal. I don't, I don't think anyone should buy the, new, the GTR Nismo, um, which is funny for me to say because I'm a huge GTR fan, but it's such a ripoff at $175,000. I think they used to be like one hundred twenty-five grand. they have upped the price to such a stupid level. I mean, I don't understand that. Um, anyway, and then there's probably going to be a new GTR coming out soon. They've had them out for 10 years now. So there should be a, you know, everyone talks about a new GTR that will come out with uh, hybrid um, electronic motors and things like that. So I'm looking forward to that. And, and that, that is something for someone like me who, if, if, if I'm seriously looking at a 600 LT, um, which I hope I am, I don't know if I really am, but hopefully next year in January, I will, I will know if I could really get one. I would be also thinking, well, do I want to hold on to my GTR, continue saving money, um, and save up for the next GTR that comes out that should be amazing? Maybe it won't be, but that's that's really something for me to think about because 600 LT is a very expensive car when, it, when you really think about it and maintenance and things that if you break your front bumper in a parking lot, that stuff just gets, it's a whole other level of expensive to deal with. And um, and also having the the door wings, you know, the wings opening up, it's just a spectacle in a parking lot. If I just want to drive up to the gas station to grab a Red Bull or something, you know, it's like, oh, check out this guy in his McLaren. He thinks he's so cool. Like I don't know that whole, that whole stigma that goes with like you know this rich supercar guy. I don't want. I don't, I'm not really that guy. I don't. I don't know if I really want to become you know, be driving that guy's car, whatever that makes sense. I do, I really, I really like that car. I just, I'd be kind of embarrassed opening a going door thing. Um, anyway, I digress. I want to make a video. This is my last comparison video. Um, I do want to make a kind of a summary video where I talk about all of the cars again, just very quickly, um, you know, kind of make some big points um, about all of them, but um, that hopefully that video, maybe I'll have some time this week to do it. I've, I have just really busy work schedule lately. Um, and I've been trying to pump out some other videos like the uh, the MCOOP videos I've been putting out about my MCOOP that I'm working on. Um, there's a lot of fun stuff with that for me right now. And but I really wanna, after I'm done with these, I'm almost done with these 600 LT videos. And then my focus will shift to making more GTR videos about my actual car that I do own, not these imaginary fantasy videos. Uh, and maybe some more videos about my Raptor. Um, cause I do have some decent like off-road footage and things. I, I need to just do a flat out review of my Raptor cause I've owned it for a year now. And I think a lot of people would be interested in it. And I need to do a review of my GTR cause I've owned it for three years and I don't think there's enough people that do car reviews after owning a car for that long, um, that have know all the little tiny quirks and all the little stuff that no one else would know. So, um, anyway, if you like that kind of stuff, stay tuned. I'll bring more content. Bear with me if I'm uh, only uploading. I, want, I would love to upload every weekday, but bear with me if I'm only doing one or two a week. Um, it should get better, you know, as I, time goes by, as I get out of my busy season at work. Uh, so if you like this kind of information, do me a favor. Smash the like button. Yeah. Uh, subscribe. Um, and hit me with some comments if you have anything you want to tell me. And I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Thanks.